Hi, hello. Hi, how are you? Really great, it's pretty sunny and nice today in Paris, so let's go. <laughs> let's go. So, tell me about yourself. Who are you? So, I'm Julia. Where are you from? Uh, Warsaw, Poland. Where is your major? Uh, bachelor in law. Okay. What year are you? Second year. Where are we now? Uh, now we are next to my uh, faculty. This is actually where I have my classes. Mm -hmm. So, why did you choose Sorbonne University? Oh, because it's a university with a long history and tradition, especially in law. It was always majoring in this domain. So that's why we are here. <laughs> yeah. And what is a typical Sorbonne student like? Oh, we don't really have a type of a student. We are just all really open-minded and we try to change the world to make it a bit a better place. Yeah. And you? Do you feel like a typical Sorbonne student? I don't think so, because actually me, I'm uh, advocating for culture and history, especially in Franco-Polish relations. So it's not really a typical goal of a yeah. Sorbonne student, but yeah. we are all different. <laughs> What about fashion? Do students care about their looks? Not really, especially on a daily basis. Everyone is just like hoodie and jeans just to be comfortable. But for special occasions, everyone is having their own style. We are in Paris, so it's a capital of fashion. <laughs> yeah. And can you count on others when it comes to sharing notes, books or any Absolutely. other news? Absolutely. There is plenty of groups on WhatsApp, Facebook, and people are really there to help for every kind of a problem. What tips or tricks have you picked up from other students? To always be prepared in advance and not wait for last minute because it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Where is your favorite place to study on campus? Let me show you. Hi, so we are actually here. It's my favorite place to study. It's just next to my faculty, so it's pretty easy to access. It's extremely beautiful, there is extremely a lot of books, it actually dates from 19th century, it's one of the oldest libraries in Paris. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, oh yeah, hours? maybe let's move because <laughs> here yeah, the traffic is right. pretty big, <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay, so how many hours a day do you spend on your homework? I would say like uh, three, four hours, it's just to reread my lectures and prepare for group classes that I have usually three times uh, a week. Uh-huh. What activities, events, clubs are you involved in? So actually now it's a bit uh, limited because of COVID, but I'm a member of uh, Sorbonne United Nations Association and I'm active in a club that is mm -hmm. specializing in uh, human rights protection as well as uh, Diwan, Kinon culture and uh, heritage in France. Okay. And how would you rate your school spirit on a scale of 1 to 10? I would say 9 and only because we are in Covid times, so actually we are limited by French government. For example, clubs are closed now, so uh -huh. yeah, we can't really party. <laughs> yeah. And how often do cancelled classes happen? Are the professors always on time? Uh, cancelled, not really, but professors are often late. As everyone in France, it's actually one of the rules that is not written anywhere, but everyone is ready for it to, to come. Okay, okay. And when it comes to the application process, what do you think is the most important for the recruiters? Academic, so, extracurricular or personal? So I think that actually really academics, like your grades from high school, because the system is really technical. Firstly, they look on your grades and then they are focusing on your yeah. personality and mostly your motivation. Why exactly you want to be in this university in France and why not anywhere else? Yeah. And what do you think got you into Sorbonne? Well, I think that firstly my grades and then uh, the fact that I was convinced that I want to be here yeah. to develop my skills the most, to be able to really advocate for culture, history mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what I want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And what do you usually do after finishing lectures? So firstly, I'm walking for around 10 minutes because I live uh, from 10 minutes from my uh, faculty. Yeah. Then I do grocery shopping and sometimes I'm going out with my friends uh, to the cafe for a glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. What is the best tip to balance social life and studies? Well, I think organization. The fact that you need to uh, go to sleep early and wake up early yeah. and just trying to get energy from everywhere, even from the sun, because you will need it a lot. <laughs> so, how do you motivate yourself? Well, I'm always thinking about my goals and what I want to do in the future. Right. The fact that uh, I would really like people to be more equal. I would really like for women that are having goals to be able to empower mm -hmm. their dreams. And I think that uh, I'm needed in the society, so that's mm -hmm. why I'm waking up and I'm trying to pursue my studies. That's great. 
What habits do you have now that you wish you started much earlier? I think that what I said already, waking up mm -hmm. early and going up to sleep early. <laughs> Because yeah. uh, this, it's really organizing your day and like this you can really start it and give the most of yourself. Sleep is important. So, how much sleep do you usually get? Seven, eight hours. Wow, that's great. Is there any specific reason you chose France? Yes, because of its culture, because of its food, because of people that I, abso that I absolutely love. And just look around. <laughs> is Paris a dream city to live in? Absolutely. Okay. Do you have your favorite place to eat in Paris? Well, I would say every Parisian garden, because usually there is a lot of sun, so when it's not raining, most of the time I'm here because it's really close to my university. Mm -hmm. And if you could have lunch with one person, alive or dead, who would it be? Well, I would say uh, Christian Dior. Uh, because he was really like a person that was having knowledge in every domain in fashion. He actually also finished Sciences Po. He was keen on law, on mm -hmm. politics, economics. And that's why I think uh, his brand is such a well-known brand that achieved such a success. Huh? Wow. Okay. What about the living costs? According to the world's most expensive city ranking, Paris takes second place. Yeah, actually it is really, really expensive. That's why restaurants and cafes, it's mostly for occasions and usually we are forced as students to eat at home or in school cafeterias. Mm -hmm. But luckily museums um, are free when you are under 25 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's time to profit when you are young. <laughs> and the cost of attending Sorbonne? Well, actually, for me, it's free because I'm receiving a bourse uh, from the government. But uh, if you are not, it's 170 euro per year plus 90 euro of contribution for students' committees. Mm -hmm. So it's not really expensive, taking into consideration yeah. that it's a really great university. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so is there university housing? Yeah, there are plenty of occasions, but however, it depends on the incomes of your parents. So sometimes it can be difficult to get it if you are kind of rich, but if you have financial difficulties, French government will always help you and you can find a student's housing pretty easily. Yeah, so financial aid is available. Yeah, absolutely. But as I said, it all depends on the incomes of your parents. There is like uh, nine echelons. Uh, depending on the incomes of your parents, you can get from 100 to 500 euro per month. So what is a stereotype about French that is not true? So I would say the fact that everyone was saying that they are really mean, which is actually the opposite. Everyone is super mm -hmm. kind and always willing to help. Okay. And what is a stereotype about French that is true? The fact that they are really, really slow and they are taking the, the time in doing everything. But this is actually what I like. It really, really convinced me. Uh huh. And was it easy for you to come into contact with different culture, language, mentality? Well, there is a few international students at my university, but since I absolutely love French culture, I wasn't really searching for them. So I'm mostly in contact with Frenchies, but mm -hmm. that's actually what I love. So, okay. And what do you find essential to take with you when moving abroad? Well, moving abroad, uh, moving to France, it's two different things. So uh -huh. here I would really say patience because administration and everything takes really, really a long time. Okay. So that's definitely this. And when it comes to payments and uh, all administrational mm -hmm. stuff, it's kind of easy if you're from European Union, okay. but out of it, I think it's a bit more complicated, but mm -hmm. I don't really know the details. Okay. Okay. Do French people speak English? Yeah, it's actually the stereotype that they don't do. Sometimes, okay. even if it's not perfect, they will always at least try. So I think this is what counts. Mm -hmm. And how comfortable are you speaking French? 100% because actually kind of all my life is happening in French. It's mm -hmm. like my studies, my fiance, which is French. <laughs> so that's it. That's true. Do you have your favorite French word? Well, I would say... Uh, ouais. <laughs> uh, on, uh, we are often saying it instead of we, which is yes, and I think that it's kind of cute. Okay. And what are your tips for learning French? I would say again, a lot of patience because it's really difficult, especially when it comes to pronunciation. So yeah. I would say watching a lot of videos in French, trying mm -hmm. to get interested in culture, history, because this is actually motivating you to learn a language, which is mm -hmm. really, really difficult when yeah. it comes to pronunciation and also grammar. Yeah. 
And do you agree with fake it till you make it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you watch Emily in Paris? Yeah, I watched the first season for the second one. I wasn't really having enough time. Okay. And do you agree with the image of the French people and France? Not really. I think that it's really full of cliché that I are not really according to the reality, okay. especially the fact that French people don't respect the other cultures. I think that it's totally not true. Okay. That, like they are really trying to understand the others, even though they are really, really attached to their culture and their mm -hmm. language. Still, they are super open minded. Okay, so the image of the French people in France is not accurate. No, I don't think so. Okay. In three words, how would you describe the atmosphere of France? I would say that it's really a slow life, uh -huh. that it's appreci appreciation of little moments such uh -huh. as like carpe diem. Uh -huh. uh, and then I think that just beauty, that they really appreciate beauty of everyday life, like the fact that everything is so beautiful here, the buildings, the parks, they really appreciate it. It's like they really appreciate life. That's great. And uh, in three words, how would you describe the atmosphere of Sorbonne? Again, definitely slow life, everyone is taking their time. I would also say open-mindedness, which is even bigger than uh, in France in general. And kindness, because everyone is really, really kind. Okay, so now maybe we'll eat something, since it's actually uh, 2 p.m. and we ate lunch at 12, which is usually <laughs> happening like this in France. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the cafe to take uh, a cup of coffee. How often do you see your family? Well, I would say for Christmas and for summer holidays, mm -hmm. so twice a year. Okay. And did you get used to the distance between your family and you? Absolutely. Actually, in my case, I was already used to because my father, uh, as a diplomatic soldier, he was traveling abroad for a lot, a lot of time. So we were used to distance and we are just like taking advantage of every moment that we have together and that's it. Okay. And now be honest. Did you want to leave your country? Yeah. But I don't want to go anywhere else. Like I just want to stay in France. It's here where I have my whole life, my career plans, my love, my friends. Mm -hmm. Literally the only thing that is missing is my parents because I have a really small family. And okay. it's not that complicated because the distance between France in Poland it's not that huge yeah and are you planning to come back one day no I think that I will be more useful here even for my country like as I already said I'm interested in history culture and uh, how law is regulating these domains so Franco-Polish relations I think that I can do great here from France from Paris okay so what are your plans for the future professionally I would like to definitely stay here and uh, I would like to advocate as I say, for history, culture, respect, common cultural relations between France and Poland. Or if not, I really love the domain of fashion. Uh -huh. So like protection of uh, heritage of big brands such as Dior or wow. Saint Laurent. It could be also interesting. So it's between these two domains, but it always stays culture low. Okay. And if you had to choose a song to describe your experience here, what would it be? Well, I would say that to describe my experience, it's difficult to say but I would say French spirit and what it's like really making me proud of being a part of French community because this is how I consider myself it's uh, Mon Eropon uh-huh okay and to end our interview <laughs> would you want to tell me a joke you know by heart so it's not really a joke but uh, more an expression in French uh, c'est sous en polonais uh, it's like uh, drunk as a Polish guy or Polish girl <laughs> so watch out because in Paris the community of Polish students it's big so <laughs> during the soirée d'intégration uh, okay. you can see what can happen <laughs> okay thank you so much thanks a lot cheers <laughs>